Alhamdulillah, we thank and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the tawfiq and hidayah to pray our salah in Jama'ah in the masjid and also to come out in the way of Allah to seek knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the answer of Allah ta'ala except from us and that he increases us in beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. Amen. One of the issues that in contemporary times is a really big and pertinent issue and comes up all the time is the issue of objecting to that which is legislated in the Sharia ah by way of how we feel about it and what we think about it. And in many cases this emotions, this Aqifa, it is given preference over the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people respond to that which is established in the deen of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala with the emotions. As we know, the Sharia has its sources. And that the Muslim is commanded to judge by it. It's commanded to return to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also the Ijma' of the Muslims, the consensus of the Muslims, and that which is established in its ruling by correct Qiyas analogy. As for al atifa the emotions, or al ara al shakhsiya or the personal opinions, or the ahwa, the desires and wants that each and every person differ in, then this has no place in the Sharia. Ah. This has no place in the Sharia, ah, and it doesn't determine what is accepted and what is rejected in terms of the Sharia. Ah. Nor does it determine what is good and what is bad, or what should be done and what should not be done. It is not for the Muslim to give himself preference or to give preference to his feelings or his emotions over the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet this is something that is life. This is something that is life and this is something that it has become all but accepted that everywhere you see where the Sharia for example is posted or conveyed you see people replying with their emotions and reply with what they feel and what they think. And this is not acceptable in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, we know that it is from Iman, that in every matter that we judge, we judge by that which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. And then that is from Iman. <coughs> And in one such ayah that establishes this and which we always mention with regards to giving preference to the Sharia and that which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has brought, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He connects this to Iman. He says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثم لا يجدوا في انفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما. الله سبحانه وتعالى says no by your Lord. الله says فلا then no by your Lord. وربك لا يؤمنون. they do not believe. they do not believe. 
حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم انت ذلك يو او محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ذا جاج ان وات ترانسبايز بين ذي انت ذلك يو ذا جاج والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم از بوت وان الله تعالى از ريفيلد ذا جاجمنت اوف ذا قران ان السنه they do not have true iman until they make you the judge in whatever transpires between them, whatever differences they may have. ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قبلت and then they don't find within themselves any difficulty in what you have judged. ويسلموا تسليما and they submit with full submission. That is when they have iman. When in every matter we look back to the Sharia, to the Book of Allah, and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we say this is what Allah has ruled, this is the law of the Sharia, this is the ruling of the Sunnah, this is what the Muslims have consensus upon, and therefore it is correct, and therefore we submit to it, and we have no difficulty in our hearts with regards to accepting that ruling. When you say you want to sleep and they submit with full submission, so we submit, and we don't say, "But I feel, I think, you know, I don't feel this is right." Allahu Billah, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has decreed something, has given a ruling upon something. Who is Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given a ruling upon something. The Muslims have agreed upon it. It is not permissible for you to enter your feelings, your emotions, or your opinions in order to reject it, in order to object to it, in order to fault it. Subhanallah, this would be from deficiency of iman that you do this. And the person who gives preference to his emotions, yani this is a person with deficient iman, because Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They know by your Lord, they don't believe. They don't believe until they make you the judge. They make you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the judge in what transpires amongst them. Today we see in the ummah, that when the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is transgressed, when the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is overstepped or simply ignored, subhanallah, and those who command with the good and prohibit the evil, as they are commanded in the book of Allah and in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they do it, it is said, I don't feel this is right. I don't feel this is right. But the same individual did not feel anything when the laws of Allah was broken. They did not feel anything when the laws of Allah wa ta'ala was overstepped and was ignored and was transgressed. And then when inkar al munkar is made, when the people of knowledge and those who recognize the evils from the tulab ul-ilm and the du'at and the mashayikh when they reject this evil and then you hear the emotions I don't feel this is right you know subhanallah in the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is turned into markets and turned into places where they beat drums and sing songs no one says anything no one says anything no one feels bad no one feels bad. But when somebody comes and he says, this is haram in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are turning the houses of Allah into markets. You are turning the houses of Allah into, into uh, places of play and jest. No, no, we don't feel this right. Now the emotions, now the emotions come. Oh, subhanallah. Emotions does not have any uh, 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 bearing on the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must bridle your emotions with the Sharia. You must bridle your emotions with the Sharia. 
You must keep your emotions in check so that your emotion does not lead to your own destruction. And many of the ulama they have made this clear that when emotions are not kept in check and in line with the Sharia, those emotions may lead to destruction. Remember, emotions is something Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala created us with it. Allah Ta'ala knows we have it. And therefore the Sharia is there to, to restrict it. But you cannot just act on emotions. And you cannot speak based on emotions. You must be back to the Sharia. And when the Sharia is judged in a matter, Subhanallah, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا كَانَ وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ It is not for a believing male or a believing female. إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ That when Allah or His Rasul has decreed a matter, has judged in a matter, it is not befitting for the believing male or female that they have any choice in their affair. Subhanallah. That they have any choice in the affair. Only the true believer, Wallahi, only the true believer will feel the sweetness of this and the beauty of this. It's to see the beauty of this that I have no choice in my own affair after Allah and His Rasul has judged in it. It is not about what I want to do, it is what my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to do. It is what our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved and the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is what He has commanded us to do. And it is not about what I feel and what I think. It is not for the believing male or female that when Allah is the Rasul has judged their affair that they have any choice in their affair. And then what does Allah say in the ending? وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالَ مُبِينَ And whoever disobeys Allah and his Rasul then he has gone plainly astray. He has gone plainly astray and Allah protect us. Emotions is not the yardstick in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many examples, in fact with regards to the ayat that we mentioned, when our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by two of the sahaba with regards to the water issue, when Zubayr had taken the water to Yani, uh, uh, water is plantation and the neighbor was saying, com- complaining, Ya Rasulullah, you know he's taking from the water and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you better take the water and then let it flow. If the water, Yani said, you let your plantation and then let it flow. And the person said, is it because he's your cousin, Ya Rasulullah? This is emotions. Is it because he's your cousin, Ya Rasulullah? So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, also buy it. Water your plantation and then keep back the water. <laughs> keep back the water till it reaches a certain place, then you, then you let him have water. Oh, subhanallah. Why? Because out of his emotions, he did not accept the judgment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The example of the Surah of Al Hudaybiyah, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the treaties, the sulh, with the mushrikeen. Yani that they will return. And they will leave the mushrikeen alone. And that if anyone from the mushrik, everyone, anyone from the place of the mushrik, from Makkah, the best place, if everyone runs from Makkah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina, he must send them back to the mushriks. And if anyone from the Muslims in Medina go to the Mushriks in Mecca, they don't have to send him back. They will keep him. So, on the surface of it, this looks like 
Subhanallah, that's completely unfair. Completely unfair. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, alasna ala al-haq, wa hum ala al-baatil. Ya Rasulullah, are we not upon the haq, and they are upon baatil? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bala, definitely. He said, Ya Rasulullah, and uh, it, it, it is uh, our people who die. Are they not in Jannah? 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 If you want to find them, you know, our, our Qatla is a Shuhada. They are in the Jannah. Are they not in Jannah? 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 Are they then why must this dhaniya, this loneliness be on us and we must go back? Yani emotions. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, I am Rasulullah. He said, Ya Ibn al-Khattab, I am Rasulullah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never cause me to be lost. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he walked away. But he was angry. You know, he's angry, subhanAllah. So he came across Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he said, Ya Abu Bakr, alasna ala al-haq wa humana al-baatil? Same thing. He said, are we not on the haq and the al-baatil? But he said, yes, definitely. He said, oh, is our deceased not in Jannah and they deceased in the fire? He said, definitely. So why must we accept this loneliness upon us and go back? So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said, Ya Umar, he is Rasulullah. He is Rasulullah and Allah will never cause him to be lost. SubhanAllah, Umar was emotional. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, judged by what? By the Sharia. This is Rasulullah, and you don't give preference to anything, not yourself or anyone else in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses of Al-Fatih. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called Umar ibn al-Khattar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and he read it to him, inna fatahna laka fatha mubina. Umar said, ya Rasulullah, is this a fatah? Is this a victory? The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, this is a victory. And Subhanallah, whoever studies the seerah and the history will realize that the Surah of Qudaybiyya was indeed the beginning of the Fatih. It was a great victory for the Muslims. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew it by revelation. Whereas Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu did not understand it due to his emotions. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he perceived it based on revelation. Knowing that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam receives the revelation from Allah and his ruling is the haqq. His ruling is the absolute haqq. Many matters of the sharia, when people judge by their emotions, subhanallah, it brings about distraction. It brings about destruction. Another example, with our two beloved sheikhs, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anumma, our two most beloved imams, after our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two imams of this ummah after the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu was overtaken by emotion, and he said, whoever says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has died, I will take the sword and chop off his head. He said, no, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't. His emotion was so much. And he spoke with that emotion. He said, whoever said Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, I will chop off his head. And Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, be quiet, O Umar. Be quiet, O Umar. And then, subhanallah, 
يريد الناس يستلموا مسلمس وما محمد إلا رسول قد خلق من قبل الرسول أفإن مات أو قتل انقلبتم على أقاربكم ومات إذ محمد يكسب المسنجة من المسنجة زي سباس تواي بفوهم If he is to die or is killed, will you turn back on your heels? Oh, subhanallah, that with the Sharia, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he judged in the affair immediately and brought settlement and the Sahaba said, it is like the first time we heard the ayah. It was like the first time and we knew with certainty that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had passed away. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he wanted to chop off the head of those who say, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead. Emotions. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu brought matters back, yani to the sharia, to how it must be with the sharia. So the emotions must be bridled with the sharia. And if the emotions is let loose without the Sharia, yani restricting it, people will fall into destruction. In the time of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, especially the last two Khulafa, when the Khawarij emerged, the Khawarij emerged, and they loved the Qur'an, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yaqa'oona al-Qur'an. They will read the Qur'an. But he said, it will not go past the throats. No understanding of the Qur'an. No understanding. They read the Qur'an. They will make ibadah. But, yani, no understanding. And one of the reasons, they are khutasa al-asnan. Because they are youngsters. They don't have the knowledge. They have not made any tabakhur, they have not any gathered up knowledge. They are young, khudatha wa lasnan, sufaha wa lahlam. So they are foolish dreams, foolish aspirations. Imagine you put yourself ahead of the great sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You put yourself ahead with your emotions and your feelings. Before those who learn their deen from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So based on the emotions, they said, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he, he was not judging by the Qur'an. And Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was also not judging by the Qur'an. And these are two sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what did they say? They are kuffar. Na'udhu billah, this is the khawarij. On emotions, they declared Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kuffar and fought them. <coughs> and fought them. They killed Sahaba. Radiallahu anhum. Those who Allah ta'ala said, Radiallahu anhum maradu'an. They killed them. Because their emotions, they said, no, they have not judged by the book of Allah. Subhanallah. No sharia. To bridle and to guide that emotions. <coughs> so when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Yani called and Muawiyah called to uh, senior scholars to judge, they said, Oh, you have called on other than the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does the Quran judge itself? Does the Quran speak and tell you what is the ruling? No. Subhanallah. You have to call upon someone to give the judgment. But this is emotions, unbridled emotions. Emotions that are, that are not restricted by Sharia, and so you don't understand anything but what you feel. You don't understand anything but what you feel. The Shia likewise went astray based upon emotions. The Shia went astray based upon emotions. How can you fight the son in law? of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his cousin. How can you uh, fight the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Which never occurred from the Sahaba. Never occurred from the Sahaba. They let Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu be killed. 
So what did they do? They made that fear of all the Sahaba. And in, in doing so, they made that fear of themselves. This is emotions. Make that fear of all the Sahaba. What did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Whoever says to his brother, O Kafir, then one of the two of them, one of the two of them has taken the ruling. So the moment you make that fear, when they make that fear of the Sahaba based on their emotions, and they say, because you did this to Ali, and because you did this to Fatima, because you let Hussein die, because they are all kufar. They make that fear of those who Allah said about them, radiyallahu anhum radu'an. So we know with certainty with proof of the Quran that the Sahaba, Allah is pleased with them. And they are pleased with Allah. And you have said that they are kuffar, so one of the two groups are kuffar. Now we know with the Quran that they are not kuffar. Allah is pleased with them, so it goes back to yourself. So the Shia out of emotions, and they destroy themselves. They make that fear of themselves. They make that fear of themselves. Likewise, we see, even in today's time, when similar situations occur, when we find that the Ummah finds itself in trials and tribulations, and the Hudatha al Asnan, the young ones, with sufaha wal ahlam, with foolish aspirations. They come up and they say, oh, revolt, we must revolt. We must overthrow. We must overthrow the, the rulers. The subhanallah, and then they think, because they have the sufaha wal ahlam, this foolish aspirations, based upon unbridled emotions, oh, they are oppressing us, oh, they are taking the money, oh, they are... They think, okay, we, we're going to take over the country. Like that Hakim is going to sit there and say, okay, take over. Huh? That unbridled emotions, it stirs up all the Muslims and what occurs? Revolts occur, which is then crushed, that rebellion which is then crushed in accordance with the Sharia. And this is what they then, then they get more emotional. When the leader then says, pipe, send in the army. Subhanallah, you look at how can you kill us like that? How can you were the ones? You started it with your emotional rantings and your emotional stirring of the people. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is on the side of this hakim. If the ruler is now if he's retaliating and he's putting you all in place and he's cutting you off, he's doing what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded him to do. Doing what the Nabi also commanded to do. If you are united behind one leader, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam When somebody comes to you and you are already united behind the leader, فَقْتُلُ الْآخَرِ Execute that other one. Who said so? Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you say this, Allah, you can hear all the emotional shouting. How can you kill the opposition? Huh? You must let them also speak. Democracy, freedom of speech. All of, all of this, all of this emotional, you know, uh, rebel, all this emotional uh, speech that they just want to, they just want to incite you. No backing of the Sharia. No backing of the Sharia. So when the Hakim does, what the Sunnah has told him to do, and then they, they stir up the emotions of the people. And then you find the ignorant people also just responding with emotions. Yes, how can they do that? Oh, subhanAllah. There are many other matters that to a person who doesn't have knowledge, emotionally, yani he may <laughs> You may not you may not be able to to take it. But you must submit to the Sharia as we have said. You must submit to the Sharia. We live in a time of what? Liberalism and feminism. Feminism. The ladies are in charge. Huh? The ladies have equal rights to the men. 
the ladies have equal uh, opportunity. All of these things, that they are equal. And they are equal to the men. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that whenever you jari alayhinna daraja, and the men have a degree over them. Who, who speaks this? This Sheikh Fulan and Sheikh Fulan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Walil yujari alayhinna daraja. And the men have a degree over them. A degree of authority. A degree of responsibility. A degree of authority. Authority. What is authority? Can I do this? No, you can't do this. Khalas. Huh? What must you do now? You must obey your husband. Emotions doesn't like this. Emotions don't like this. Wallahi. When you say this, this is something else. Uh, if لو كنت آمرا أحدا أن يشهد لأحد لأمرت المرأة أن تشهد لزوجها If I had to command anyone to make sujood to anyone I would have made command to the woman to make sujood to her husband Why? لعظم حقه عليها Due to the enormous right he has over her What did the woman say about this? It will be all emotions. It will be all emotions. Why? Because this is the Sharia. This is the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And your emotions must be bridled with the Sharia. Emotions must be bridled with the Sharia. And, and, and <laughs> we are like this because they are more emotional than us. Well, they're supposed to be. Today you get men. Ya Allah. <laughs> One, one, you know, subhanAllah, I dealt with one incident and the woman said, subhanAllah, Sheikh, when is he going to allow me to be emotional? <laughs> He's always been emo. When is he going to allow me to be emo? You know, subhanAllah, you get emotional men also. And this is why we need to know that emotions must be kept in check. Must be kept in line with the Sharia. You see from the woman, even in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that it is, it is the reality. When, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know, مَا رَأَيْتُ مِنْ نَاقِسَاتِ أَقْلٍ وَدِينٍ أَلْهَبَ لِلُبْنِ الرَّجِلِ الْحَازِمِ مِنْ إِحْدَاقُنَّ He said, I have never seen someone with deficient intelligence and deen that can make a serious and strict man lose his senses, like you, woman. You know, he said, he said, I've never seen someone, Naqisati Aqlin Wadin, who is deficient in Aql and in Deen, Adhab, Lilubi Rajul Al Hazm, who can make a man's intelligence go away, a serious man, like one of you women can. So, they didn't just accept this. The emotion, Ya Rasulullah, what is our deficiency? What is our deficiency in our aqal and in our deen? You know, so this emotions. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Is it not that the witness of two women is equal to the witness of one man? In the book of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the witness of two women is equal to the witness of one man. Right? And one of the reasons at least one of them forgets, the other one can remind her. Well, the other one can remind her because they go through certain things that the man doesn't go through. All the emotions get the upper end of them. And so there must be a witness and they feel sorry for the person. You know, the man is more likely to want to, to apply the law, irrespective. Irrespective, he's going to apply the law. This is the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the woman, she, her heart is, she, she was made like this. This is why she rear our children so, so beautifully. And she has this love and this gift for the children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the two has to be soft. And he said, is it not, they said, and the, the, and the deficiency of the deen? He said, is it not that when you have your height, you sit back and you don't fast and you don't pray? They said, this is the deficiency of your deen. 
And you can never make up. You can never make up that, that amount to the man who, who is always praying five times a day every day throughout his life. And you praying, you have a week of every month. It's a, it's a difference. No, but they, they ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. Whereas, we, subhanallah, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said something, samirna wa ta'ana, it is so, whether we understand it or we don't understand it. The emotion mustn't take, take over. Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a beautiful, some beautiful statement with regards to emotions. He says, Al-Atifa to Rubbama takunu Asifa. He said, the emotions may just be a storm. Kathir min al-Nas yandafi'u wara al-Atifa. Biduni an yufakir wa yuqaddir wa yandur fi umur. He says, many people, majority of people, they rush behind emotions without looking into the affairs and estimating it, and justly or investigating it. He says, وَعَلَى الْإِنْدِفَاءَ وَلَا الْعَاطِفَةَ سَيَحُولُ عَلَى الْعَاطِفَةَ إِلَى عَاصِفَةَ And this rushing behind emotions, it will turn this emotions into a destructive storm. لِأَنَّ الْعَاطِفَةَ إِذَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهَا كَوَابِحْ مِنَ الشَّرْقِ وَالْأَقْرِ أَرَدَّ بِصَاحِبِهَا إِلَى الْهَلَاكِ because the emotions, if it is not bridled by the law, by the Sharia and the intellect, it is not restricted and tied by the Sharia and the intellect, it will lead the person to destruction. It will lead the person to destruction. He says, أنا لا أقول تكلم بلا عاطفة لأن الكلام بلا عاطفة قد تكون أو قد يكون ميتا لكن لا أقول تكلم بعاطفة حارة تحرق ما أمامها. It is I don't say that you speak without without emotions. It's because speaking without emotions is like the speech is dead. But I'm saying don't speak with emotions that is heated. And fiery emotions that burn everything in front of it. Is this not what happens when people yani, follow and rush behind the emotions and they don't bridle with the Sharia? That they're rushing to destruction for themselves and for others. Yani, and then afterwards, okay, now they realize they let the emotions get the better of them. How many times have we heard this? SubhanAllah, you do counseling. Ya Allah, you know how many times you heard, oh Shaykh, I let the emotions get the bit of me. And then they cry afterwards. So the Shaykh says, تَكَلَّمْ بِعَاطِفَةِ الْمَوْزُونَ بِالشَّعْءِ وَالْأَقْلِ Speak with emotions that is balanced by the Sharia and the intellect. It is balanced by the Sharia and the intellect. You must balance your emotions with the laws of Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and with with the unsensible thinking. He says, Though Annana Sirna wa al Awatif, la halakna wa ahlakna. And if we were to run behind emotions, we would be destroyed and cause destruction. Wama akfar al ladina yasiruna fi ala zaman bil awatif. And how many are those in this time that run behind emotions? without looking at the results and without verification and investigation of the matter and this is a great danger upon the deen and the dunya a great danger upon the deen and the dunya Sadaqallah they have spoken the truth by Allah without doubt you see this today and subhanAllah, even in the matters which is clear, which is clear, and people commit haram. When you reject that haram, the people with, the, with emotions, without sharia, with emotions, how can you speak about this? 
how can you expose this? SubhanAllah, I have a good example recently. How can you expose the people of Batil, this person? How can you put his picture there? This is one example. Very emotional. Wow, this is not right. You, you put the man's picture there. We did not put the man's picture there. The man put his picture there. Can you imagine this? If somebody does Batil in public, does Batil in public, it is open, it is out there. This transgress the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Throw it behind his back. Forget, and not, not just forget it, but know it's haram and say it's haram. But still doing it. And then when he is called out, why are you doing this? This is haram. This is batil. What is happening here is falsehood. And then the emotions come up. Then the emotions come up. How, how can you expose? You can't expose what is already up open on, the, on social media. How can we expose it? If it was hidden somewhere and we bring it out, this is exposing it. You know, our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تتبع أورات المسلمين Don't seek out the awrat of the Muslims. Don't seek out the faults of the Muslims. When the Muslims publicize their faults on social media, on Facebook, and everywhere else, then we don't need to seek it out. These are mujahiruna bil fisk. These are open transgressors. May Allah protect us and save us. These are open transgressors. There is no ghiba, there is no namima with regards to someone who is mujahirul fisk. If you, you, you walk down the road drinking wine, and I say to someone, you know what? This guy is a drunk, he walks down the road drinking wine. I'm not exposing him, he exposed himself. He exposed himself. But the problem is we have emotional attachments also. We are emotionally attached to celebrity chefs, celebrity imams. They can do anything. They can say anything and no one must say anything about them. SubhanAllah, when they transgress the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you must remain silent. You must remain silent because it's imam. Because it's Mawlana, because it's Shaykh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all his creation. And the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is applicable to all his creation. Wallahi, if I sit here and I say something false to you, and I lie to you, and you put it there on Facebook that the Shaykh said this, this is a fabricated hadith, or this is a lie. Wallahi, I can't go crying. Oh, look, they put me on Facebook. I put it on Facebook. Not me. I don't have Facebook. But you. <laughs> but I knew. I'm, I'm full aware that you are, that you are posting it, or that is, it, it is live, or whatever the case may be. You know, subhanAllah. So if I, if I speak falsehood to the masses of the Muslims, somebody must rectify it to the masses of the Muslims. This is the responsibility of the one who knows it, the one who knows the haq, and he has the proof, then he must rectify it. And it is my responsibility to retract what I have said. To retract what I have said. If I said, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he, he, he made the kala this swelling and people beating drums and, and somebody calls me out, and he says, Wallahi, this is a lie. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never did this. Bring the hadith. I know there's no hadith like this. It is my responsibility to make tawbah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and to come out and tell the Muslims what I've said was wrong. What I've said was wrong. And here once again, the awatif, the emotions come. Why? Because some, some of us, we can't be wrong. No? Some of us, we can never be wrong, infallible. You know, we're incredible. We can say Sahaba made mistakes, but we didn't make mistakes. He's never wrong, subhanAllah. Can you imagine? Wallahi, I've never seen as many retractions from statements and from rulings, you know, where a scholar, a sheikh says that I said this, but it has become clear to me that this is what is correct and this is what is sahih. I've never seen this so much 
as I've seen it with the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But the ulama of Bid'ah, the Ahlul Bid'ah, the forerunners and the leaders of Bid'ah, they never say anything wrong. Why? Because you must follow the Sheikh. And if the Sheikh is going to admit that what he taught you was wrong, and what he said was wrong, and he knew this is the Sunnah, but he didn't do it, and he knew that is haram, but he still did it, if he's going to say it, you might not follow him anymore. So now, Shaitan is playing with his emotions. Shaitan is playing with his emotions. He knows he did wrong. You know, subhanAllah, it is his responsibility to, to retract and to make tawbah and to make it known to people this is wrong, we shouldn't do this. Emotions, subhanAllah, it takes a back seat to the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a responsibility, it is a duty, it is a wajib bittifaqil muslimin by the consensus of the muslims by the consensus by ijma we said one of the proofs in sharia is what one of the sources is what al ijma consensus it is wajib by consensus of the muslims right from the salaf salih from the Sahaba and the Tabi'in and the Imams of the Deen that followed them, from the people of Ijtihad whose opinions are valid in the Deen. Then it is a consensus from them that it is wajib to warn against Ahlul Bida and to clarify their condition for the Muslims. Wajib bittifaqil Muslimin. Wajib by consensus and agreement of the Muslims. That you must warn against the people of Bid'ah and clarify their condition to the Muslims. Why? So that the people don't follow this destructive parts of Bid'ah. That they don't follow those who are calling them to the doors of Jahannam. Those who are calling to the doors of Jahannam. Our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything he said is the ultimate haq, isn't it? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything he said is the truth, without a doubt. Did he not tell us that there will be du'a ala abu wabi jahannam? That there will be callers to the gates of hellfire? Man ajaba wa nilaya qadafu fiya? Whoever yani, responds to their call, they will throw him into the hellfire. Did he not warn us? Wallahi he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us about this. He warned us clearly. When the Sahaba said, describe them for us, Ya Rasulullah. Did he say, no, no, I'm not going to describe them. Huh? He described them. How did he describe them for us, Ya Rasulullah? He said, Hum min jildatina. They are from our people. Wa yatakallamuna bi lisanina. They speak our language. He described them. So that the people must look out. And watch out for these people who call into the doors of Jahannam. Whoever is calling you to shirk is calling you to a door of Jahannam. Whoever is calling you to bid'ah is calling you to a door of Jahannam. It is wajib upon those who know that they clarify it. It is wajib upon those who know that they warn against it. No emotions. Emotions come later. You know, later when, you, when you're at home and you, you know, you're speaking with the wife and with the children and you're speaking about other affairs, you know, there's emotions. But when you speak about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is the deen of Allah. It's the deen of Allah, it's not your deen. It's not your deen to do what you want and to be, you know, uh, to not be held accountable. But you can speak, imagine. Imagine if we judge on this emotions that you know what, don't speak about anyone. Don't expose the people of Batil. Don't expose them, don't refute them. You know, we must all just, what did I say? Must all just get along, can't we all just get along? Huh? Imagine if, if we judge by like this, what would remain of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What would remain of the deen? If everyone is allowed to do what he wants and no one must say anything, because you mustn't speak about him, you mustn't speak about me, you mustn't speak about that. You people shield shit all the time, bida bida all the time. Hmm? <laughs> Palestine, 
facing problems and you're speaking about shirk. Shirk is a, the biggest problem. Subhanallah, some of the Ju'al, Ju'al Muftis, ignorant Muftis, speaking of for, for, the, for the masses. Speaking for the masses, oh, you want about, you know, these matters of innovation, well, there's bigger problems. Bigger problems than you corrupting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Muslims. Bigger problems than you calling them away from the tawheed of Allah and calling them to shirk, calling them away from the sunnah and calling them to bid'ah. There's bigger problems than this. All the problems that exist that cannot be solved is on account of this. It's on account of you abandoning your deen. On account of you not establishing the tawheed of Allah, not staying away from shirk, not establishing the sunnah of Rasulullah and staying away from bid'ah. This is why the ummah is in the problems that it is. You say, are we going to do this for Palestine? We do this for Palestine. Subhanallah. Return to your deen. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He gave the answer to our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That this humiliation, this belittlement, Allah will never raise from you until when? Hatta tarji'u ila deenikum. Until you return to your deen. Until you return to your deen. No, subhanallah, not this emotional, Allah, emotional speech today, crying supposedly for Palestine and for this and for that, and tomorrow he's making bid'ah and shirk again. What's the point? You know how we expect our du'as to be accepted for the people of Palestine, but we're calling all the people to shirk. How does Allah accept the du'a of a person that makes shirk? Well, why this is this? It's, it's, it's very bad. We are in a very bad state. That the generality of Muslims, they think it's all about your emotions. It's not about your emotions, it's about the deen of Allah wa ta'ala. Put your emotions aside. You are a slave of Allah, you are commanded with Islam, you are commanded with submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to his laws, to his tawheed, to the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Put aside your emotions, submit to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. When we say cover up, ya ukhti, oh my sister, my beloved Muslim sister, cover up yourself, jahannam, subhanallah. Jahannam la tutiqu. You are not capable of having someone in Jahannam. Cover yourself. Protect yourself. Oh, don't judge me. This is your emotions. The Sharia commands you to, to cover. Allah commands you to cover. Your Creator, your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you to cover. No, don't judge me. I am I'm my own person. Allah, this is all. Emotional yani, rantings and nonsense. Nonsense, and then unfortunately, when this emotional talks come, and then the Imams they take a back step. The Imams become scared. The Imams they try to please these people who are speaking with emotions. They must give fatwas that make them happy. This is khidlam, this is humiliation. And the Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they are free from this. They are free from this. And they are commanded to be free from it. The solution, I want to mention something that one of the great Imams of the Salaf said, Abu Aliyah, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, Ta'allamu Islam. He said, Learn Islam. Why this is the solution? تَعَلَّمُوا الْإِسْلَامِ فَإِذَا تَعَلَّمْتُمُوهُ فَلَا تَغَضُوا عَنْهُ Learn Islam. And when you have learned Islam, then don't desire anything else. When you have learned Islam, then don't seek anything besides it. وَعَلَيْكُمْ بِالصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ فَإِنَّهُ الْإِسْلَامِ And it is a must for you to hold on to the straight path. Hold on to the Sirat al Mustaqim, for this is Islam. Wala tan harifu anu anis Sirat. 
yamina wa la shimala and don't stray from this path to the right or to the left don't stray from this path to the right or to the left wa alaykum bi sunnati nabiyyikum sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you must hold on to the sunnah of your nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa iyyakum wa hadhihi al-ahwa and be way of all this desires be way of all this whims this whimsical desires this innovations this opinions this one's emotions that one's yani ideology this one's philosophy be way of all of it go on to the sirat al mustaqim go on to the sunnah of your nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what does he begin with ta'allam al islam learn islam learn islam wallahi these imams of misguidance these callers to the gates of our fire they subhanallah exploit the fact that muslims do not know their deen they exploit the fact that you are not going to go read the quran they exploit the fact you're not going to check in the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam whether what he said or what he is doing is found there they exploit this so you must return and learn your deen and when you have learned your deen hold on to it and don't seek anything else and ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu when speaking about what the people have introduced into the deen and speaking about the solution for the people he said regarding the muslim yahrab bi qalbihi wa dinihi wa la yujalisu ahadan min ahli bid'ah he said he must flee with his heart and with his deen and not sit with any person of the people of bid'ah this is for all the generality of muslims ibn mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu sahabi great sahabi of rasulullah mm-hmm. sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has given that is giving this advice to save the people in the time when innovations become rife so this advice is for who it's for all the muslims he is warning them from the people of bid'ah these innovators these imams of misguidance He says you must flee from them, run from them. Ya harabu bi qalbi wa dini. He must flee with his heart and with his deen. Wa la yujadis. He must not sit with any one of the people of Bida. This is, Subhanallah, just two of the advices of the scholars of the Salaf, and there are many. Our time does not allow us. However, we must know that this speaking with awatif and giving preference to it, speaking with emotions and giving preference to it, and preference to what I think and what I feel, or what so and so thinks, or what is his opinion and his opinion over the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is from the ahwa. This is from the whimsical bidahs, and a person must flee from it. for the safety of his heart and his deen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and Allah make us steadfast upon his book and the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and save us from the people of misguidance and the pitfalls of misguidance and keep us upon the sirat al-mustaqim which is the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until Allah takes us from this dunya. Wa naktafi li hadha al-qadr subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك وصلى الله على نبينا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين